Yay, I win! Yay, I win! Hi, that's how I've been keeping myself busy these days. How about you? At least in this game, I always win. You see, in life, nobody wants to lose. Everybody wants to win. Be it in a sports competition, be it a rivalry among suitors, be it in the classroom, be it in a struggle to keep your company alive, or in the fight against COVID-19. All of us want to win. When we watch a movie like Avengers, who do you want to win? Yung bida o yung kontrabida? Si Thanos o yung Avengers? Siyempre si Thanos, di ba? Ay, mali. Siyempre, yung Avengers. That's why, in Infinity War, when Thanos was winning, ang pangit ng ending, di ba? That's why people looked forward to Endgame, where Thanos would eventually be defeated and the Avengers would win. You know the story of the first Easter, or as Christians would call it, the first Resurrection Sunday is a story about winning. At first, Satan thought that he was winning. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, was tortured, beaten, he was nailed to the cross, and was buried in a tomb. Satan was probably claiming victory by then, only to find out that the situation would be reversed in three days. Brothers and sisters, today is lockdown, day number 27. How are you? I've been praying for you always. You see, life on quarantine is very much like an extended Lenten season. So I hope that you can use this time to reflect and to meditate on the Word of God. Today is Resurrection Sunday. You know, the first Easter is all about winning. It is a celebration of victory that Jesus has won the battle over Satan so that today we can live victorious lives. But why then does it seem that we are on the losing side? With the church closed on Resurrection Day, it would seem that the church is losing to the enemy today. And it's the first time for many of us to celebrate Easter this way, probably the first time since the Second World War. This day, Easter, is actually very important in our Christian calendar. But all we can do right now is to cherish, to reminisce the memories of our past Easter. Though it saddens me on this day that we cannot come together to celebrate the victory of our risen Lord, but the hope that Easter brings is the most important thing that we need as we face this crisis today. May it give us the courage to face our own extended lockdowns in the next two weeks. I was a businessman before, and I know how hard this would be for your businesses, how worried many of you are right now concerning your future. I just ask you to please hold on because resurrection not only promises us victory, it also promises us hope, the hope of a future victory. Now, can you greet the people who are with you right now? He is risen. Then the other person responds by saying, He is risen indeed. Can we try that? He is risen. He is risen indeed. You know, that is the only glimmer of hope that all humanity has right now. That's the only hope we have left. Though this is our first time to celebrate Easter in this most unusual way, I know that whether we are gathered or scattered, that the event of the resurrection would continue to remind us that God can bring good out of evil, healing from sickness, life from death. And that's what the resurrection is all about. You know, God's ability to meet us regardless of the situation or the location we are in, for the church remains the church whether we are gathered or scattered. And we will always be victorious with God. Can you say to the person next to you, with God, we will be victorious. First, 
Allow me to salute all our medical frontliners who are fighting COVID-19 in the different hospitals from around the world. The doctors, the nurses, the medical technologists, those who are operating the ventilators, those who are assisting, like my sister, to all our NMEC doctors and nurses, especially those who have volunteered to help. Jayo. We also remember at this time the families of those who have lost loved ones during this quarantine period. Maybe not to COVID, but to other illnesses. To the families of Brother William Go, the sister of Sister Juanita Cham. And also to the family of Reverend Peter C. May God's comfort continue to be with you at this time. Shout out to those who are worshipping with us from Kathmandu and Rasuwa in Nepal. Hello! From Dhaka, Bangladesh and Bangkok, Thailand, as well as our friends in Singapore Bible College. To Sister Antoinette and Sister Bernice in Seattle, Washington. To our friends in Canada, China, Australia and New Zealand. Hello also to our brothers and sisters from NMEC Metro North, as well as those from the Mandarin Ministry. To our members, to our co-workers, to those who are attending New Millennium Evangelical Church. I love you and I will continue to pray for you. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, in times such as this, we need you the most. So Lord, may you be the one to minister to each person that is watching this morning. Lord, only you know their needs and only you can address them. The sins of your servant are many, but Lord, may you cleanse me so that I can be a worthy instrument today to speak your words to your people. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the situation during the first Resurrection Sunday is actually very similar to what we are going through today. During that first Easter, the disciples were also on lockdown. Remember, they were hiding inside a room. They were huddled together in fear. And who are they afraid of? They are afraid of the Roman soldiers and the religious authorities who had just crucified Jesus and who would likely come after them also. They were scattered. Groups of disciples were gathered in different locations, just like how we are today, this morning. You are gathered in your own homes. Today, we are also on lockdown on Resurrection Day. But this time, we are hiding from a virus, afraid to get sick. During the time of the disciples, they were hiding from the soldiers, afraid to die. That night on the Garden of Gethsemane, the disciples were a bunch of losers. They fled into hiding, afraid for their own lives. Everybody was saying that they were losers. Jesus at that time also seems like a loser. Nobody was expecting his resurrection. Nobody was doing a countdown. Oh, three days na lang. Three, two, one. Nobody is waiting for him to return from the grave. But Jesus did not die on the cross. He ended up victorious. Wala na siya. Wala na siya dito sa cross. That's why the angel said, He's not here anymore. He's risen. Kaya nga yung cross natin, wala nang Jesus. Imagine worshiping a dead God, a loser God. Kung siya nga talo, paano ka pa niya tutulungan? If Jesus is a loser, how can he even help you? See, Jesus is no longer on the cross because he is risen, he is alive, and today he is victorious. And his resurrection was not just an afterthought. It was not an accident. It was never a last-minute decision. The resurrection was a moment that was orchestrated even before the beginning of time, even before creation. Sa umpisa pa lang, alam na ng Diyos na panalo siya. And all throughout history, there were glimpses of that victory that is to come. In Genesis, we have the image of the crushed serpent. 
And that's the enemy that was already prophesied to be defeated even before the battle began. In Noah's time, we have the rainbow, and that's the promise of the future victory that is to come. For Abraham, a ram was provided for his sacrifice. For the Israelites, the blood on the doorpost signified their deliverance, their rescue during that first Passover. And for us, the spotless lamb on the cross signified our victory through Jesus Christ. All of these are foretelling of Jesus' future victory that is to come. The story of Jesus Christ did not end in the grave. And that spells the difference for us today. If Jesus Christ died and was never raised from the dead, if he is still inside the tomb, or if he is still on this cross, then you are a loser today. Then everything I preach here is just a joke, joke, joke. You see, the difference between Jesus and all these other religious founders is that only Jesus rose from the dead and is alive today. Confucius, Buddha, Muhammad, they are still dead and inside their own tombs. Only the tomb of Jesus Christ is empty today. And that empty tomb is a proof of Jesus' victory. So today, we know that Jesus wins. Can you say that to the person next to you? Jesus wins. This morning, let me show you how Jesus wins over four of our greatest enemies in life. The first one, Jesus wins over sickness. Do you ever get tired of sickness, of disease? Are you tired of COVID? No, sawang-sawa na ako sa kakapugas ng kamay. We get sick of getting sick. When Jesus rose from the dead, He defeated sickness forever. And you may ask, bakit may COVID pa din? You see, God hates sickness and viruses as much as we do. Sickness and viruses, they are not part of God's original plan. They are the consequences of our sin. Let me repeat. Sickness and viruses are not part of God's original plan. They are the consequences of our own sin. That's why when Jesus came, he wanted to change that. He healed the sick, he healed the lame, the paralyzed, the blind, the possessed. But he knows that physical healing is only temporary. We will get sick again. That's why Jesus had to rise from the dead so that there will be no sickness anymore in our life in eternity. Jesus came to fix the problem of sickness by conquering sickness. The Bible tells us by his stripes we are healed. So that someday when we have our glorified bodies, we would no longer get sick and we look forward to that day. Number two, Jesus did not only conquer sickness, he won over sin. You and I, we have a greater problem than sickness and that's the problem of sin. That's actually our greatest problem, the brokenness and the bondage that sin brings in our life. Before Jesus rose from the dead, there's nothing that we can do about our sins. But because Jesus rose from the dead, those who are in Christ can now be freed from their sin and are no longer in bondage. They can now overcome their sins. Today, we can have victory over our sins every day, every moment. Why? Because the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that was given to us by God to overcome the temptation of pornography, the temptation of lust, of premarital sex, of committing adultery. It's the same power that He has given for us to control our anger, our temper, for us not to gossip, not to be envious, not to be proud. Number three. Jesus wins over Satan. When you come to faith in Christ, we got an enemy. And that enemy knows everything about us, including our weaknesses. And he's trying to do everything in his power to discourage us, to derail us, to make us depressed, and ultimately to destroy us. Satan is after you every day. And all throughout history, 
Satan has been trying to stop God's salvation plan for humanity. But the Bible tells us that Satan is already a defeated enemy. Talo na siya. He cannot win over us so long as we are under Jesus Christ. As the, at the resurrection, Satan's plan was already defeated. We can see that this in 1 Peter chapter 3. It tells us, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven is, and is now at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers that include Satan in submission to him. Colossians chapter 2 tells us, Having disarmed the powers and authorities, and that includes Satan, God has made a public spectacle of them, being triumphant over them by the cross. For those who believe in Jesus Christ, Satan no longer have, has a power on us because he has been defeated once and for all when Jesus rose again. That's why 1 John 4 verse 4 reminds us, Greater is he, Jesus Christ, that is in us than he that is in the world. So you and I, we win. You know, Satan knows that his time is up and he will soon be thrown into the lake of fire. That's why in these last two minutes of the game, he's doing everything he can to stop the gospel from reaching the whole world. He puts the whole world on hold, on a pause today through this coronavirus in order to buy some time. So let us not allow him to do that. Let us stop him. Let us do our part to share the gospel to those who still haven't heard about it. But no matter what he does, we know that in the end, Satan is still loser. Number four, Jesus wins over death. You know, one of our greatest fears is physical death. That's why we are afraid of COVID-19. We are afraid to die. Before Jesus rose from the dead, death is the ending for all people. But God provided an answer. And what answer is that? eternal life. When Jesus rose on the third day, death is no longer the end, but the doorway, the entrance through which we walk into eternity. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 reminds us, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Death is now dead because Jesus already won over death. Jesus now holds the key to death. And what is the evidence? He went down to Hades. He opened the gates in order to bring all these Old Testament saints before the presence of God. Now, you may ask, if Jesus already won over death, why are my loved ones still dying? Well, that's called physical death. John chapter 11 tells us, Jesus himself said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. That's physical death. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. That's spiritual death. We will no longer die the second death. We need not fear death because we can now overcome death. And the only way for us to overcome death is through Jesus Christ because Jesus wins over death. And we can have the hope someday to see our loved ones again. Without the resurrection of Jesus, when you die, you die forever. Without, But with Jesus' resurrection, there is a way out right now from death into life. So if you don't have Jesus in your heart, I pray that you will receive and believe and accept Jesus into your heart right now so that you also can be victorious over death. You know, why did Jesus have to come to die on the cross and to rise from the dead? The answer is in order to show us how to live in victory. Let me end with this story. There's a missionary who was ministering among a remote tribe of Amazon Indians in Brazil. There was a large river that separated this tribe from the outside world. 
One day, many of these people in the tribe caught a contagious disease, just like COVID. And one by one, these people are dying. So this missionary, he told these tribe's people that there is a hospital at the other side of the river where they can be healed. But these Indians, they were afraid to cross the river. They were scared of the spirits, thinking that crossing the river would mean death for them. So the missionary, he tried to explain that he had already crossed the river so many times, but he did not die. And in order to persuade them, he even showed them. He waded knee-deep across the river and said, No, I'm still alive. But these Indians, they would not believe him. So what he did, this missionary, he jumped into the water and he swam across the river. And from the other side, he shouted, See, I'm still alive. And that's the time. These Indians believed him, and one by one, they crossed the river, got the medical help they needed, and were eventually saved. And that's exactly what Jesus did for us. He came to tell us that there is life after death. And in the same way, when Jesus came, he healed the sick, but the people did not believe him. He raised Lazarus from the grave after four days, but still the people did not believe him. It is only when Jesus himself entered the river of death through the cross and came out from the grave to the other side that the people finally believed him. Praise God that Jesus won over death so that today you can also be victorious over death, over sin, over sickness, and over our enemy, the devil. Where sickness once defeated us, Jesus had defeated sickness. Where sin had defeated us, Jesus now had defeated sin. Where Satan was defeating us, Jesus had defeated Satan. Where death was going to defeat us someday, Jesus has decisively, has decisively won over death. Now, what does this mean for us? What does resurrection mean for us today? There are four applications. First, each day can be your resurrection. Each day can be your resurrection day. Because we have a God who brings dead things back to life, if your marriage today is dead, if your finances, relationships are dead, we have a God who can bring this back to life. You see, Jesus' resurrection is our victory today. That's application number two. His resurrection and our victory today is actually interconnected. You can have victory over anything today because Jesus came out of the grave. Why? Resurrection means total victory. Jesus won over anything and everything, over anyone and everyone. And that same thing can also happen to us. Third, because of that, we can live out that victory. Sadly, for many Christians, our faith is not reflective of what we believe. We know here that Jesus is victorious, but our lives do not do not show it. Brothers and sisters, are we living a life today as if Jesus is still dead? You know, we are given a choice. Either you live as a loser or you live as a winner. Will you live, will you choose a life of defeat or will you choose a life of victory? Many Christians do not live a victorious life. Remember that the same victory that Christ has won over sin, over sickness, over death, can be yours because of Christ's resurrection. Because Romans 8 tells us, we are more than conquerors through Him who loves us. Whatever it is that you may face today, be it fear, depression, anxiety, Jesus has won over all of this with the resurrection. He has won victory over sorrow, over failure, over setbacks, over low self-esteem, Jesus has conquered all of this for you. And now you are more than conquerors through him who loves you. Now, I want you to join me as we sing this song. You know the song, so I know that you'll be joining me in your own homes. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow 
一颗犀利。Oh, fear is gone. 一颗塞诺。Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, because you live, we can now face our future with hope. We can now face our future, our tomorrows, be it a recession, be it a pandemic, be it bankruptcy. Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace, which can never change and can never be taken away from us. We thank you that you are alive, that we are not worshiping a dead God, but a recent King. Lord, we thank you that on that first resurrection day, that you won over sin, over sickness, over Satan, and over our second death. So Lord, may you help us live out that victory today. Through Jesus, may we overcome all our fears, our fears of COVID, our fears of sickness, our fears of sin and death. Brothers and sisters, if you are still in bondage today and you think you cannot get out of it, maybe there's a sinful relationship, maybe an addiction, maybe you think you are helpless. Remember, living in you is Jesus who is greater than Satan and Jesus is already victorious. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. As our application, I want you to share with the people with you, what is your personal COVID that you need Christ to help you overcome? What is your personal COVID that you need Christ to help you overcome? Or you can share your own story of victory that God has allowed you to experience in your life today. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Thank you for worshiping with us and we hope to see you next Sunday. Thank you.